I'm building a two trailer tiny house and it's time for a build update because these doors are finally in and I think we should check them out. So before we get into checking out what these doors look like, let's step back a little bit and have a look at how I put them in. Uh, so when we last checked in on these doors, I pretty much finished making the doors, just had a little bit of brass to do. So the next step was to get in and make these jams. And what I did was machined the jams and the door stop all out of a single piece of timber. So I got a 140 by 45, machined it down, I machined the lip on the inside, and then a rebate for where the hinges are gonna go that creates my door stop when the doors swing around and seal up against my door jam. So the next step is to build the door seal. I machined that out of a solid piece of timber where I cut the rebate for my door stop down below so I can stop where they're getting underneath, and then inlaid some brass. I put the brass on the corners to protect the edges of the timber, and then my brass strip at the front that slopes down away from the trailer to move water away from the house and so the doors have something solid to seal up against. With the jams and the door seal all machined up it was time to put it in the house ready to hang the doors. Now one thing I've done in the house is I've recessed my door seal down into the floor of the trailer and I'll explain why I've done that in a moment but that involved cutting out the floor so that the door seal could sit down closer to the level of the floor. And that's actually something I planned for when I built the trailer because I welded in small ribs to support the edge of the flooring and my door sill. I then screwed together the door jam and attached it to the seal plate inside the trailer. With that all made up, I was able to stand it up inside the trailer and then fix it into the house. Now I'd already hung one door off of the trailer inside the shed. That allowed me to get the alignment of the first door perfect but I couldn't line up the other door because I didn't know how the jams were gonna sit on the trailer. So with one door hung, I then got my second door, hung that on and fine tuned that to get it exactly the same level as the other one as it hung onto the door jam. Now with the doors hung in the door jam, it actually looked all right. Like they lined up pretty well. It was really finicky to be able to get them lining up perfectly because as I said, I can't trim these doors. I had to get the alignment of those hinges and the uprights of those jams perfect so that these doors lined up perfectly in the house. But as I did that, I hit a problem, and this one was pretty significant. What I found was this door here, the tops were bowed out. This piece of timber here was bowed like this, and pretty significantly, almost five millimeters, which meant when this latch lined up the door here, the top and the bottom were both kicked out, and too much to accept. So with the glass on, I didn't really have much choice. I had two options was to redo, rebuild the door completely. <laughs> I didn't have that in me physically or emotionally to rebuild these doors. So I had a curve like this. So I came up with this idea of like, if I could put this opposite side under compression, it might bend it back around. It's kind of like a bimetal spring where when one side expands, it bends back and when the other side expands, it bends the other way. So what I did was drilled in dowels almost every 75 millimeters along this top edge here with a relief dowel underneath. And what that did was try and expand out this side that might try and push out the ends and bend it back. So 44 dowels later, <laughs> I actually straightened it. That was probably one of my craziest ideas. And I was pretty nervous because if I slipped and hit this glass, it would explode. Quite literally, this stuff, toughened glass just explodes and goes everywhere. Once I'd finished putting all the dowels in, I actually managed to reduce that to only a couple millimeters. So when this lines up now, the bottom and the top are at just a little bit, but not quite as noticeable and it's enough and it'll actually press up against the seals, which is, which is good. But I was really worried that that might have been a showstopper. Okay, let's have a look at these doors in a little bit more detail. First of all, the jams. These things are pretty simple. I machined them out of a solid piece of timber and I've cut the door stop in by rebating where the door hangs. That means I don't have a door stop on the inside here, creating a nice smooth finish on the inside of my doors. What I've done to flash these off is I'll have flashing that comes in, in behind this door stop here in a rebate and will be sealed up against here and the hinges will actually sit on top of here. So when I do my flashings, they're gonna wrap right in behind here and there'll be seals that actually stop moisture getting in before it gets in behind that door stop. So the door seal is actually a pretty simple part of the door, but I put a lot of thought into it. What I really wanted out of the door seal was when I stepped through the door, this to be flat. So what I realized is when I come through a door and I'm holding the door and I step in, my gait actually means that my foot ends up stepping on top of this door seal. Now, what annoys me about that is like when you've got aluminum doors and stuff like that, um, you have like a, a bulky sort of door seal here and it's uneven to step on. So what I wanted was this door seal that was flat to step on, but also a very similar level to the floor here. So this is only about 
depending on what flooring you're using, it's either gonna be level or five to 10 mil just below. So as my foot steps on here, I haven't got a huge difference in how the door seal actually um, sits up from the floor. So my foot has something pretty level to stand on. Also inside, it looks much cleaner. So instead of having this big step sitting here, it's only a little lip, which is a nice piece of brass. Now this is real brass, so as this wears, it's gonna, it's gonna um, patina and change color. But as I walk through here, it's gonna stay a bit shinier in places that I'm walking quite regularly, which I kind of like, because it means that, like, the brass is kind of living. It's kind of constantly changing and you, you sort of see the effects of life in the house, which I really like. Now the other thing that I've done is I've cut a channel into the door seal here, right on the edge of this brass. The reason for that is I'm gonna make a fly screen. And I've done a channel up in the top jam as well. So what will happen is instead of having, what normally happens is you have a lip here that a runner run, runs on, but I didn't like that because it meant it's gonna be sitting up and most of the sort of tracks out there were quite a large extrusion of aluminium, which just would have looked terrible. So what I'm gonna do is I've cut this channel into here and then on the bottom of my sliding door is gonna be a brass angle with some small rollers so that this angle can slide along inside that guide. It doesn't sit up and looks really minimal on the inside. Now, there is one problem with that collecting dirt, which is something I probably have to deal with. I'm not sure how much I'm gonna collect, but I probably prefer that over having a chunky aluminum extrusion sitting here. And the beauty of this is, is if I wanna open up both doors, I can simply lift it out, swing it out, put the door around underneath the trailer and uh, I've just got both doors and I can't really tell there's a track there. On the outside of the doors, I really want to create a minimal finish that looked really tidy, complemented the windows, but I didn't have to maintain. So what I've done is I've got a solid piece of glass that's the full size of the door. It's only then got a small piece of brass capping around the outside that seals up the door. And that brass capping is attached to the glass with a bead of glazing silicon that seals it hard up against the brass there. And then on the inside of where it cut out for my door locks, I've also completely silicon them up. So if I get a bit of moisture in there, it can sort of sit or run back out without running down inside the door. At least that's the hope. But the intention is to stop moisture ever actually getting into those holes where these lock sets go through the door. So my main door Door latches into the side of the side door here, which means I can use this as an everyday door to come and go in the house. But I've also used these broad butt hinges so I can open the doors all the way around back on itself onto the house, which means I can completely open up the inside. And this side door here has these recessed bolts on the, on the edge of the door that when I open this main door, I can release these and then open the door up all the way onto the house. And so these two doors can open onto the house, which is gonna look amazing against the dark cladding around there, but also I get this really large opening that opens up the inside of the house to the outside. Because that's gonna be my kitchen in there, or the kitchen opening out onto what I hope one day will be a deck, entertaining area. I open up the inside to the outside and get to bring in the outdoors, which would be awesome. Now both doors are completely capped in brass, but a little bit different with the hardware. So on this door, I've actually done this a little bit different where I have polyurethaned on a small piece of angle here that goes onto the edge of this door. And what that means is when this door closes, I get a weather strip that seals up against this other door here. Now this will have a uh, foam seal in here. So when it hits up against the other door there, comp becomes completely weatherproof and also stops wind and rain pushing in between the gap of these doors. The other thing I've done is I've cut the brass in around my door latches. So these door latches have been neatly cut in. I tell you what, that one has to be one of the most tedious jobs I've ever done. And the one lesson you have to learn the hard way is take a little bit at a time. And if you think you can just take a little bit extra that one time, you go too far. Now the lock sets that I've used in this door is just a passage lever set in the bottom because I don't need that to lock at all. Now up top here, I have a smart lock that operates a dead bolt that slides into the other side of that door there. It's got a pin pad on the outside there so I can enter a pin to enter the house and then a manual latch on the inside. Now the cool thing about this is I'm gonna integrate this with my home automation. So this house is gonna be automated. This is where things are gonna start getting pretty cool from now on. This here, I'll be able to control with my phone, with the automation inside the house, and I'll be able to control whether the door's locked or not, let people in, etc. So the side door is much the same as the other one. It's timber and glass capped in brass. So the bottom latches here, I've recessed 
these recess bolts into the edge of the door. So they can't be accessed unless that door is open. And then I've actually made, <laughs> and this just took so much time, made up my own strike plates for the deadbolt and the side latch. Now the reason I've done that is because A, this looks tons better than what it came with, but also with this bottom one here, it meant my strike plate didn't come out past the edge of the door because when the, the uh, weather strip swings around, I would have had to notch in around that strike plate there. Now, the one thing a strike plate has is a, is a ramp that allows the latch to sort of slowly slide in, coming come up over the ramp and then slip into the hole. But because I've got enough of a gap there and because this is stepped, the latch actually has no problem sliding against that. Also it meant I could adjust the size of that hole so that when the latch comes over and strikes in, it lines these two doors up perfectly. Then on the inside of the house, these doors feel awesome. I've got my seamless door jams with no door stops. Um, so just like the windows or a piece of plywood coming up to here, the edge of the door jam and to continue straight through to the door. I have my door seal down below here. Um, so there's a small step here. And the reason for that is, is I'm looking to make my own flooring out of the off cuts from the uh, window timber. Uh, we'll come back to that at a later date. But just in case that doesn't work, I had to leave enough height here if I had to put in engineered flooring. So that's 14 mils high. So if I do use that, it'll be level. And if I do manage to do this flooring, I'm just gonna get a small step there, which doesn't bother me too much because we've got a nice piece of brass capping it anyway. The doors on the inside here have started to make this place feel like really cozy. It's a little warm timber with golden brass. And it's just closed this area and made it feel nice and cozy, which I was a bit worried about um, early on, the feeling I was gonna get in here, but putting the doors on has really helped that. And then the best bit is I can open up these doors and just transforms the house. It brings the outdoors in and just feels amazing. So that's the doors. And I tell you what, <laughs> these things were just a monumental effort. I think they've been the single most detailed labor intensive thing I've done in the house proportionally. <laughs> and I'm joining two trailers together. <laughs> Oh, but I tell you what, I, I love how they look. On the outside, black band, the brass trimming just looks super sleek. And on the inside, I've got this warm timber with brass trim. It just feels amazing. Like, it feels like a, a hug from grandma. Um, so I, I'm pretty chuffed to have them on the house. Uh, the next step is actually moving on to the cladding. So the cladding should be here very, very soon. And I can't wait for that because it's going to look amazing. But also, it actually means that this thing will be at lockup and it's going to be weatherproof. So I can't wait to show you that. So I've been prepping, re getting ready for that. Um, and in between, because we've got some rain coming and I'm still waiting on for the cladding to be uh, dropped on site, I've been working on the air vents. Now off camera, I've actually been working on the mechanics of those. So I hope very soon I can show you a little bit more on how those air vents are going to work because I'm pretty excited to share that as well. In the meantime, you guys know the drill. Don't hate, educate, comment down below if you see something that is in this video that can be improved. And uh, as always, go build cool stuff and I'll see you again soon.